What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Legendary Season 1, Episode 7. Listen, this episode was the best episode of the season. This episode was everything. I was here for it. I was here for all of it. Okay? So we start this episode off. First of all, I was here for it. Let's start from the beginning with the theme. Capes and tights. It was a whole superhero theme, okay? This is a cash ball. There are four categories. No um, no houses will be eliminated, but you can earn cash prizes. Here's the catch. There are no chops either. I kept waiting for people to get chopped. Nobody got chopped. Everybody gets whatever category. Everybody gets to go through their whole category. The judges will pick who they think did it best, but here's the catch. Wherever there's a superhero, there's always a what? A villain. And what they did was they brought back people from houses who have been eliminated. And some were from, they call them 007s. I found this out by watching My House. Shout out to My House. If y'all not familiar with My House, My House was a show that came on Vice. It was sort of like um, a, a docu-series on houses in New York. And they actually explained certain things. A 007 is someone who does not have a house. Um, so instead of their last name being um, 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 Lavin or Balmain, it's 007. And maybe they used to be a part of a house and they left a house or they're not a part of a house, but they walk balls independently. It's a whole thing with it. So some of the villains were 007s. Some of the villains were from houses that have been eliminated. Very interesting concept. I thought it was great. And if they basically... They went up against the winner of the category. And if they did it the category better, they got the money. Okay? So, let's start from the beginning. The first episode was... Oh, and the guest judge is Winnie Harlow. I like Winnie Harlow. She's a supermodel. Very good. The first category is um, Queen Titans. And it's a runway and a vogue. So, they come out running, walking runway... Then there's a reveal into their superhero suit, and then there's they vote. So the first person to walk was um, um, Jarrell. Is it? Is it? I think it's was it Jarrell? Yeah, it was Jarrell. Jarrell, in my opinion, from the very beginning, had the best walk, had the best reveal. He came out. He walked. He walked to the back of the stage, and his reveal it looked like a real reveal. Like it was like. I mean, it almost looked it looked it almost looked edited. It was so smooth of a reveal. I mean, it was like the plan, and I was here for it from the beginning. Um, Lavin, the reveal was weak. I mean, it was like you had to take a piece off. The piece got stuck. It wasn't a smooth reveal. The walk was cool, but I was distracted by the fact that the reveal, especially especially after the first reveal, was so flawless. That second one being really weak, it just it it just yeah. House of Gucci did a really good job of working the floor. I'm just reading my notes. Um, Escada, they, um, London came out in this dress. Um, it was tall, but from a distance, it almost looked like it was just a bunch of bubbles. It was white and it was full and the reveal was beautiful. But again, I think the most flawless reveal was um, Balmain. And that's who actually ended up winning um, the category. Now, he was the best. You know who ended up having a, um who he ended up having to dance against? Or walk against, I should say. Baby, they brought Shorty back from um from um y'all know what house. Y'all know Shorty got eliminated. Um I want to say the wrong house. Anyway, y'all know Shorty, damn it. Y'all know who Shorty is. And it was an epic, epic, epic battle. But let me tell you, there was this whole thing, you know, they, you know, they dance with each other. They sort of do this whole battle thing back and forth. And Jarrell, I want to say it was Jarrell. I hope I'm right with Jarrell. No, Jarrell is Gucci. Jelani, y'all know who I'm talking about. He ended up actually on top of Shorty. And Shorty wasn't happy about it, but it's all, you know, it's, it's love and, it's love, all is fair and love and war. You know what I'm saying? But he did it. So he ended up winning the first prize, you know, but sure, everybody was happy to see Shorty. We were all glad to see Shorty. Shorty did his damn thing. Shorty worked that runway, but he just fell short. Ooh, ooh. Then the second one was 
<laughs> um, elastic fantastic. It was all about the hands. It was all about working the hands. And you don't move. You just work the hands. You do the whole hand. Y'all seen the hands. Now, it came down to two people. We had Carlos and we had, um, oh, what was his name? I didn't write his name down, but I forgot his name. But anyway, it came down to the two that for me. But the winner was Carlos from the House of La Vin. And he went against a 007. Um, and both of them were really good, but Carlos did it. Carlos did it. So Carlos won the second cash prize, the House of Lavin. The third one poses. So it was walk, but it was poses. And it was fashionista. Now, here's the thing that made me mad about the editing. Because I'm pretty certain every judge has critique of every category, either praise or critique. I'm sure they do. But the way they edit it, we don't see, and I'm sure for time reasons, we don't see every single person, every single judge's comments. The one category that we should have heard Law's mouth was fashionista. Why would y'all edit out what he had to say? Isn't that why he's here? Isn't that what y'all want him here for? For fashionista? For his fashion. We ain't hear nothing from law. It's, uh, it's uh, uh. Anyway. Um, Balmain came out. I, I, I wrote down Snow Bunny. She had like the fur hat, white fur hat and the white um, fur boots. Poses with everything. The person who posed for Bal Bal Balmain poses with everything. Escada. I wasn't feeling Escada from the from the door. I didn't like Escada's outfit. It was like he described it as he wanted to be a Batman. Um, he wanted to be a Batman um, thing, but it almost looked like it was like a kilt, like it was black leather, but it was a kilt, but it was pants under the kilt, but it was a. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't like it. I wasn't feeling um, Balmain. At, I mean, not Balmain. Escada at all. Lon Vin. Mother Erica. Now, Erica had described the outfit that she wanted to wear as a two-piece with a high collar. Her outfit was none of the above. So something got lost in maybe in execution. Maybe it wasn't practical once they actually made it. Whatever it was, though, she had on this all-white suit with this short white pixie um, wig. Bitch, listen. She did that, though. She still did it. She still worked that runway. She still worked in poses, honey. But it was not the outfit that she described. Gucci um, came out. Gucci had my favorite outfit. Out of the four, Gucci's outfit was my favorite outfit. But the winner was um, Lan Vin. Now, Lan Vin had to walk against Champ. From Saint Laurent. Yeah, I remember the house of Saint Laurent. Now Champ came out as like the penguin, right? So had this umbrella. I knew Champ lost when he allowed Mother Erica to take his umbrella and pose with his umbrella. And by the time they got done battling, Erica had taken the umbrella all together. And was doing her own thing. Like, at one point, she had her hand on the umbrella and just kept moving it towards her and posing with it. But by the time the battle was over, she just had the whole damn umbrella. I said, now, champ, you can't let the person that you battling take your own prop. Because at first, he's, see, what happened was he tried to use the prop. And Erica was like, oh, okay, that's what we doing? So, Erica won. So, the House of Live In, they won two categories, right? Um... Now we've 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 heard a couple of stories in this episode. I I, I don't always give y'all the stories, but in this story we found out one and I I um, one of the guys told his story about how his mother was his best friend. I'm sorry, her, because because um she's transitioning, so her. I'm sorry, no disrespect. But she was saying how her mother was her best friend, and when she and she said she never thought she had to come out to her mother because her and her mother were close. That was her best friend, and her thing was I know my mother knows. How could your best friend not know? I didn't feel like I had to tell her. He said, uh, she said, but when she did tell her mother, she got put out the house. Her mother put her out the house. And she felt so betrayed and so upset by that because she never thought her mom would do that. Um, but she said her sister told her 
you have to do you, you have to be you. And that's when she said she started taking her hormones and everything. She said, and then when she found the ballroom and she found a house and she found her family. So that was that story. And then we heard, we heard Mother Erica's story a little bit. They asked her who her superhero was. And she said her best friend, um, her best friend has passed now, but she said, you know, she was, she said she had gone to jail. And she said she found out her best friend passed while she was in jail. And then she started going off into a whole different story. So I'm just taking it as two different stories that they sort of edited together because they wanted to tell her story. But then she told her story about when she was in jail as a trans woman in jail. Of course, they had her housed with the men. And she was saying how they offered to put her in solitary, but she didn't want to go into solitary. But then that became a whole thing. And then she said she got into it with the guards and they ended up getting rough with her and it ended up rupturing her. Um, one of her implants, but, um, but then, um, she said, then there was an internal investigation and she said, and I got justice because I'm here with y'all. So I don't know, I, I don't know if that means that she was cleared of the charges or because of what they did to her while she was in jail. They was like, look, we're going to go on there and let you go. Now, um, but she said she was there for fraud. She was, hey, she was, she was, she was running. She was, um, she was starting out there. She was, so what they call it, um, what they say, what they, ooh, what's the, what's the slang for it, y'all? What's the slang for it? Um, it's not running stunts. It's, it's, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, she was running fraud. And, um, you know, I worked at, uh, some of y'all know, some of y'all don't know. I worked at the jail, um, but it's, it's a juvenile dis facility, but we deal with the same issue. And I know that, it, it, <sighs> The larger jails, some of the larger jails have units where they keep all of the trans men and then on the other side, all of the trans women. But if it's a smaller jail, they really don't have the facilities for it. So they'll either put you where you are by lot, like what by bi biology you have, whether you have implants or not, they go by what you were, what you were born as. Um, well, I can say what you were born as, what your biology is. Because if you've had the full surgery, then, you know. Um, or they put you in solitary confinement to keep you away from the men, you know, so you're not vulnerable. Um, and I'm sure that different jails do different things. But I'm saying those are the general options. And so it sounds like she had a, a she went through a lot when she was in jail. And it is unfortunate um, and when we start talking about prison reform, those are kind of conversations that we need to have in reference to LGBTQIA rights slash prison reform. But anyway, not to go off on a tangent, but anyway, so she, she got a chance to tell us a little bit more of her story. So that was that. So, okay. Sidebar. All right. Back to the battle. Back to the battle. Okay. So then the third category was, um, Wonder Twin Powers Activate. Now, let me say this. No, that was the th oh, that was the last category. Hold on, I'm missing the category. I jumped something. Um, oh wait, no, I was on the third one. Fashionista. Yeah. Okay. So the last category was Wonder Twin Powers. Now, up until this point, all of the superheroes had won the category. None of the villains had won the money, and they really wanted a cl a, a clean sweep. So we had the Wonder Twin Powers. Um, Balmain came out. I didn't like Balmain from the beginning. First of all, they didn't look like twins. And I know that all twins don't have to be identical, but for the purposes of this conversation, you know that's what they're looking for. So they didn't look identical to me, and they just didn't, it just didn't do it for me. Me personally, just didn't do it for me. Lavin, yes, from the beginning. They looked like twins. They had a whole hand thing going on when they were tagging each other in and tagging each other out. They were synchronized. They looked like they were very much choreographed. They were very much on the same page. Even to the end, where they had their final pose, they did the exact same pose at the end. I loved them from the beginning. And it was funny because House of Gucci was talking about the only reason why Lavin won last week is because their secret weapon, Michaela, and Michaela can do all those flips and dips and twirls and swirls, and that if it wasn't for Michaela, that they would have just been okay, and they might not have won last week. But what they didn't know, though, was that Michaela got hurt last week. She hurt her knee doing one of them flips and dips and twirls and swirls. And she said, you know, but, so I'm not going to flip this week. She said, I don't have to flip. I can, but I can also work the floor without having to do a flip. And guess what? She did. Okay. Um, Ascada, 
came the closest to actually looking like the Wonder Twins. They had like the purple sequin. They actually looked like the Wonder Twins from, if you know what we're talking about from the Super Friends. Um, personally, my favorite was Lon Vin. Some of the judges did like Ascada. It actually was almost a tie between Ascada and Lon Vin. And then the Gucci um, twins, I like their outfit. They had on these black outfits. Again, their outfit, I think, was probably my favorite outfit. So it came down to Lon Vin went against the other, um, the villains. Now, here was the thing. And I knew this was going to happen. Lon Vin was feeling themselves. And they got the talking trash. They just took the mic from Deshaun. They started talking trash. And started talking about that they going to take this home and they they ain't here for it and they ain't nobody gonna come in and take. I mean, they was talking. And then the um the the, the two villains got to talking. They look like bumblebees. One was a 007, and the other one I want to say was from the House of West. Don't quote me on that one. I didn't write it down. Um, but bitch. Those villains did that. And again, I knew the villains were going to win when, um, I don't know if it was Michaela or if it was the other one, but they had their cake and she went to twirl around the bumblebee and the bumblebee grabbed and she went to go walk off and the bumblebee grabbed that cape and pulled her back by that cape. I said, yeah, that's a wrap. But once again, just like with the umbrella, you don't let somebody use your pride because she tried to twirl the cape in her face, right? Took that cape and yanked her back by that cape. I said, mm-hmm. Well, we know what's about to happen now. And and that is exactly what happened. The villains won. So the villains only won that one category. But once again, the House of Lan Vin won three categories out of the four. So when it came down to the legendary house of the night or the top house of the night, in my mind, I'm thinking that shouldn't be a thought. Like everybody should know who won. Like out of the four categories, three went three went to Lan Vin. So of course Lan Vin won the top house. But here's the catch for next episode. It's the semifinals. And what they're doing is they're combining the two houses to create a super house, a superpower. But they let Erica, since they won, got she got to choose who she wanted to team up with to, to create the super house for next week to go against the other two houses. Now, I thought she was going to pick Balmain. And she looked at the father of the house of Balmain and said... Y'all are good. But I want to compete against you. And she picked House of Gucci. I thought that was a very interesting decision. Hope it doesn't come back and bite her in the butt. But, okay. Because, listen, if y'all watch my, my RuPaul's reviews, I tell y'all all the time, listen, the object of the game is the win. Because my thing is, if you team up with Balmain, you think Balmain is the better house, and you team up with Balmain, and y'all kick people's butt this week, you're still going to compete against them in the finals now, right? Right? Okay. Anyway, but we'll see how that works out. Now, Lavin was like, I hope Gucci know they're not about to sleep, because we are tight. We don't sleep. We are, we choreograph. We, day, we work day and night. So I hope they're ready for the type of level of dedication that they about to... I hope they're ready for what they done bit. But they done bit off because we 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 not we not this good by accident. So anyway, but for me this was my favorite episode of the whole season. The, from the theme on down to the categories on down to the whole villain versus um superheroes catch. I loved it. I loved all of it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace.